Welcome to Pro Economy's latest product launch. My name is Byron Bedford and I'm the CEO of Pro Economy. We are live, so if there are any problems, please bear with us. I'd just like to say thank you so much for coming along and joining us today. We really, really appreciate it. And um, today we've got three brand new products that I'm super excited to launch. They're listed behind me. They are Ibex, Ray, and Tetris. I'll be joined by Sonia King, our sales director, and Diego Jimenez, our client relations manager, and we'll go through each product separately. If you haven't heard about Pro Economy, Pro Economy before, we produce the Orca system, which is a copper and silver ionization system for the control of disease-causing bacteria in water. We treat some of the largest and most prestigious sites in the UK, including Windsor Castle, we treat the water for the Queen, uh, but also five of the 10 largest NHS trusts and over 200 sites across the UK and Europe. If you have any questions, please use the chat function within GoToWebinar um, and we will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, if you do want to chat with us, um, I completely understand that, um, but we have had an unprecedented amount of interest in this webinar, so if we can't get back to you immediately, we will get back to you in due course. At the end of the session, we'll do a 10 minute question and answers um, section, um, so please get involved in that. Otherwise, and without further ado, I'd like to go and introduce our latest water treatment system. It's a brand new product and it is called RED. Pro Economy are a global water treatment company that have been selling our copper and silver ionisation system called the Orca for the last 26 years. So our Orca system, because of its scale, because of its size, it's developed to treat much larger buildings. Uh, we've had so many inquiries for much, much smaller properties, maybe like a wing of a hospital, smaller care home, um, a residential property, maybe a restaurant or a school that don't necessarily need to use 100 litres per minute of water. So the RAVE system is a scaled down version of our Orca copper and silver ionisation system. Our Orca system will treat from 7 to 100 litres per minute. The RAVE system will treat from 0 to 22 litres per minute. So essentially we're taking commercial grade technology that's used in much larger properties, um, making it accessible to all. The RAVE system is a copper and silver ionisation system that's an inline system that holds solid copper and solid silver electrodes. An electrical current is passed across the bars which enable positively charged copper and silver ions to be released into the water to kill bacteria. Copper and silver ionisation can kill biofilm, it can kill Legionella and other bacteria that will be within water systems. It is proven to be the longest lasting modality. I don't believe there's anything that's really out there on the market that's capable of treating such small levels of water in such a safe way. So the race system will help anyone that's looking to have safe, good quality water within their water system. This can be anywhere from perhaps maybe a residential property, somebody's home, up until maybe a ward within a hospital, anywhere that's using under 22 litres per minute of water. So if you can't keep your hot water hot, your cold water cold or keep it moving, if you're in any doubt uh, of the water quality in your environment, it will give you that reassurance. We treated 4.8 billion litres of water across the UK last year. With the RAY system, we're hoping to help many more people. So you've seen a little bit of the video, our little promotional video that we've done on each product. It will be available on YouTube and on our, on our website. So I'm here to talk to you about the Ray system. It is uh, essentially a much, much smaller copper and silver ionisation system. So for 26 years, Pro Economy have been providing the Orca system, which is a much larger commercial grade um, system for much, much bigger buildings. So yeah, we've developed this smaller system um, because we've had so many kind of inquiries for it, I suppose. So yeah, it's been trialled and tested over the last two years. It's been proven to be very effective. So now we're ready to, to launch it to the market. So I suppose essentially it's just an inline copper and silver ionisation system suitable for water flow rates of 0 to 22 litres per minute. 
So I suppose you need to ask yourself, why do you need to use water to treatment? It's the same whether it's a big system or, or potentially a smaller system. So, um, I mean, I speak to people on a regular basis that are non-compliant in their temperatures, they can't get the returns to 50 or 55, depending on the building. Um, I've, been to, well, I've been to buildings where the actual incoming water main temperature is over 25 degrees. So obviously they're non-compliant before they start. So temperature kind of plays a big part, given it's a traditional approach. Um, it may well be that you've carried out some Legionella sampling on site and you've got some positives. Um, you may well try and engineer the problem out yourself uh, and, and sometimes it doesn't always work. Or you may just be looking for reassurance, so you might already have your temperature in place. But you might be looking for, for reassurance um, instead. So you can have a little look at copper and silver ionisation. It is non-corrosive, it's not an oxidising chemical, so it won't corrode your pipe pipe and your seals. Um, in terms of distribution, because it isn't an oxidising chemical, it won't gas off. So it can get from the actual product to the outlet, uh, which is obviously what you'd be looking for. You need to ensure you've got safe water at that specific outlet. Uh, residual out, uh, value, I'd say that this is probably one of the main USPs of copper and silver ionisation. So in a lab environment, it has been proven to be effective. So a study was carried out, and at the end of the 12 weeks, there was still positively charged copper and silver ions. So that's obviously a, a really, really good uh, USP for copper and silver. Uh, and then biofilm in activation, it has been proven to kill biofilm within your pipe work. So, question says, control of substances hazardous to health. Uh, copper and silver ionisation, essentially it's just solid copper and solid silver bars, so it's safe to transport, consume, um, handle. Uh, essentially, we we were dosing it, we trialled it, um, I mean, we tried different things for the rate system, so we did initially try um, an alloy, which is a composite, um, but the problem we've got is actually maintaining that control, getting the specific levels uh, that are required. So, um, but we do dose the rate system at, under the World Health Organization uh, parameters. So in terms of sectors, it can pretty much be used anywhere, residential care, schools, restaurants, uh, healthcare, commercial, so you might have a small office, uh, things like that really. So uh, pretty much anywhere. Uh, what, if you're in any concern, I suppose you could just give us a call. Uh, we are available to have a little bit of a chat, or you can go online to the website as well. Um, so why would you be looking to use ProEconomy, I suppose, for your water treatment? We have been around for 26 years. We've got loads of experience. As I mentioned earlier, we've got some really, really prestigious sites uh, that trust us to look after their water system. Our tagline used to be proven Legionella control. Uh, we've actually changed it to the most advanced water treatment and monitoring because it's been proven to be, copper silver has been proven to be effective not just for Legionella, but other bacteria as well. Um, so compliance, that's a really, really key point, I suppose. So we are listed, it's been a very long process, but Article 95 compliance, you can actually access that from the HSC website. Uh, we are one of three companies, or most of three, but I believe it's still three companies in Europe that are listed to sell elementals, copper and silver as a buy side. Um, and then if you look at the guidance, it does talk about proper insulation, maintenance and monitoring. Uh, and that's really, really key. You need to maintain and monitor your system to make sure it's working. And that's something that we're able to offer here at ProEconomy. So in terms of um, us as a company, we have been, um, we were awarded the Royal Warrant back in 2018. We have been treating the water at Windsor Castle for five years prior to that. So um, yeah, so in 2018 we applied uh, and we were, we were awarded the Royal Warrant. So it's fantastic. Thing. So that's for water treatment services, which is uh, really, really good. So that's my little bit of a talk about rain. So if you do have any questions, keep them coming in. We are going to do the Q&A session at the end. Um, hopefully you've got some, some questions for me, which will be good, or for the team when we sit down and uh, have a little chat with you. And now I'd just like to introduce you to Diego and our next product, which is called Tetris. It's a cloud-based water management software system uh, and yeah, if you're ready, let's uh... Water systems are big and complex, so to understand how they're working and to ensure they're delivering safe water, you need to do a lot of samples. This becomes a really big task and you end up dealing with a lot of samples. And sometimes it gets confusing what the history of the results are. Tetris is a cloud-based water management system that allows you to have all your sampling and your water quality information in one place allows you to report it and to display it as you want. We get to site, we take a number of samples, and then once we send those samples to the lab, that creates a blank report. The lab does the analysis of those samples, and when they have the results, they are loaded into the portal directly, not going through us, which is it's a completely independent process. And then once you have those results, you receive a notification. Anything that's 
actionable will be highlighted red. The workbook where all those results are displayed, you can filter and you can look at it by type of results, by date, looking at the history of one specific outlet, and you can start seeing trends. And at the same time, you have a general statistic of all your results, how many samples you've taken, how many samples have failed, what is the average count of those samples, so you can have a global view. And then by two, four clicks, you can get all those reports and readings in one report. So the main benefit of using Tetris is time. It allows you to display and report your results to the people that need to see them uh, quicker than it takes you to make a coffee. It is quick, it is easy to read, and it will save you a lot of time. Thank you very much, Sonia, for the introduction. Um, and as I said, my name is Diego and I'm the client relations manager for Product Manager. And I'm going to introduce you to Tetris. Uh, Tetris is very simply a cloud based water management system that allows you to have all your sampling information in one place, allows you to report it and interrogate data as much as you want, uh, to learn as much as you want from, from those results, so you can easily present them to whoever needs to see them. So, we just move uh, into a quick, what we do is a quick demo of how it looks like and what data it presents. Um, very quickly, Tetris allows to collect, report, and present data in an easy, understandable way. Allows to report and interrogate more than 9,000 Legionella samples over nine months to obtain a broad picture of Legionella and its behavior. And it, it helps you analyze specific areas of buildings within a particular site to obtain information of problems that could be raised very specifically. So once you log in, this is the very first view you see in, it's what we call the workbook. The workbook is a simple table display of your results. Um, you can filter how you want to show these results. You can either do it by date, um, by building name. So if you have a site with different buildings, you can just change, um, you can just put them in there and, and see what each of the different systems of builders do it. Um, by specific area within that building. So if you want to analyze a particular word, put it at a particular level, anything like that. Um, by outlet number, so each sample is um, given a unique outlet number. This asset is given a unique outlet number, and each result is logged against that outlet number. So the work will allow you to filter that if you want to see, for example, the history of that uh, outlet number. Uh, by type of results, obviously we're a coherence organization system, so we have coherence of samples, but you will also have TVC samples, Legionella and Pseudomonas. The criteria for those samples, you want to see um, the Legionella greater than Pseudomonas, lower than, uh, etc. You would give a specific criteria, and in this box here, you just put the numerical criteria that you selected. So let's run through a very quick example. So we just filter from the 1st of January 2018 to the 1st of January 2018, the program name building, the theatre area, um, and then we just put a, a sampling criteria, criteria like Legionella greater than 100 CFDs per, per liter. So um, something that is really actionable. So if you click the examples, this is the table that it shows. Um, obviously, those all those results that meet all that criteria. Anything highlighted in red is anything that's out of specification, anything that needs to be highlighted. Obviously, we put a criteria that uh, is um, anything out of space, so that's why everything is red. Um, and anything that is green is anything that's okay, that you don't need to worry about. So we can identify here in this second column is the outlet number that I talked about before. We identify that there's two outlets that came up red, outlet 16 and outlet 17. So we want to have maybe a bigger uh, history of what each of those systems are doing. So um, we kept the same date uh, filter, the same main building theater. We just selected now outlet 17 in particular, and we remove the sampling criteria so we'll see everything that happened in that uh, outlet. So we see, for example, that the, two, the, the three results that we saw before, but in, the, in this particular set case, we can see that there was, for example, Legionella in the first two months, so February and April, and then it, it was clear and then came back in February, so we can instantly start seeing a trend with results. Um, another way of seeing this trend more visually is if we dive directly into the outlet um, number, so just clicking by on that number of 17, it takes us into the outlet page, and what the outlet page does is plots, automatically plots every single result into one big graph. So you can see an instant trend of what's happening. So you can see the February result here, then it's clear, then see the result back. So we can have, see very briefly what is happening. Uh, this is for Legionella, but the same for the TVCs, uh, which obviously are much more useful when they're trended. 
Uh, one more thing available in the other page is the cases. So you just see circle in there. A case essentially is an object that's in the portal that generates automatically whenever a result comes in out of specification. And that object allows you to input remedial actions and record recordings against uh, an action that you need to take because of that out of spec result. So if we look at the cases within that um, outlet, you can see every single case created by automatic failed results in that particular outlet. So you have a full history of what's happened there, essentially. So if we log into the first case, 191, here's a simple um, case page, essentially. It's, super, it's really simplified. It says why the case happened, and the general results, when it happened, time and date, uh, who's the main contact, high priority, low priority, etc. And on the left of that, you have remedial work. So, and remedial works are any actions you take in that case. So, just an example of this great one case. We have the first two general positive. So, we created a case that changed our hose and these tail mix valve. We did it on the 20th of March 2018. We resampled and then we got uh, a reading of 1828. And we go back to a previous uh, history of that outlet. You can see that's the second result that we got in there. So we did a final remedial action, we disinfected the feet to the shower, so we changed everything. We did it on the 14th of April 2018, we resampled and this time it came back clear, so we're happy. And then uh, obviously we need to get three clear readers in a row. So um, we flashed and resampled on the 1st of June, came back clear again, that's the second in our history, and then they did do it again, uh, clear it again in our history. So now we can go back to the case, we can go back through all the remedial works done, and we can see that there was an initial positive, we changed the shower hose and this stuff makes a valve, then we disinfected the feet of the shower, clear, we flush and resample, clear, we flush and resample, clear, we have three clears in a row, we're ready to move on, we've dealt with the problem. So we go back to the case, on the top right corner there, you just close the case and you, have, and you can move on. So that helps you have a really good paper trail of everything and every action that you do against a problem that arises from uh, your water testing, which is obviously very important. Um, all the things that the, the portal can display are the charging results. The charging results are essentially um, general statistics of your uh, water sampling uh, in your building. So with clicking the charging results, you have a, a average results of your whole building. This is not a specific outlet, this is all of them combined. So what's your average lead genetic account? What's the average lead genetic positive percentage? So positive readings versus total samples taken, so you know how much you're failing. And obviously your average TVC counts within the building, so how much bacteria you have in your water system in general. Other thing you have, you have the sample transactions, which is, is basically how many samples of each type you take each time. So that allows you to keep track uh, of how much how many samples you're taking and therefore how much money you're spending on them. There you go. And finally, you have the sample sets. So sample sets are generated each time a batch of samples are uploaded into the system. So you can search them by date and say, okay, sample set for the 1st of July 2020. And it compiles all the samples taken in one place. Um, this is just an example of different ones. So if you log into one of them, you have a description, the barcodes of samples are taken, who were they taken from and, and when, and then you can save their, your certificates of analysis as well. Uh, from the lab. There you go, And that is really uh, touched in a nutshell. Um, obviously, there's a few things more, but uh, we don't have time to run through them yet. So I'm happy, if anyone's interested, um, I'm happy to run with an individual demo and go through every single detail in there. Uh, now I'm going to leave you with Farm Bedford, our CEO, who's going to introduce you to Ray. Uh, no, I guess so. IBEX is our revolutionary copper antimicrobial door furniture. Coronavirus has decimated economies. Hospital acquired infections is a huge problem globally. In the US, hospital acquired infections kill 100,000 people every single year. And we wanted to be a part of the solution to those problems. We decided to invent and innovate to use antimicrobial copper on your touch surfaces because obviously infections are spread via touch. Copper is a contact killing metal, um, so it will kill bacteria and viruses on contact. Stainless steel, glass, plastic, which we see a lot on touch surfaces, they aren't. So bacteria and viruses can last on those for three to seven days, but on copper, 
copper will kill coronavirus, bacteria, viruses very, very quickly. The EPA says copper will kill 99.9% .9 of bacteria within two hours. Ibex is a very compliant product, uh, so British standards, uh, biocidal products regulations, but also fire safety and mechanical standards is completely compliant with. So one of the problems with bacteria is that it becomes resistant over time to antibiotics, but also to disinfectants. One of the real benefits of copper is that it is very hard for bacteria to become resistant to it, which is fantastic for a healthcare setting. So I just don't understand why copper isn't used everywhere. It's this wonder metal that kills bacteria and viruses on contact. We should be using it in our homes, in our hospitals, in our restaurants. Ibex is our solution to combat bacteria and viruses. And our last product that I'd like to introduce today is Ibex. There is, a, there is a problem that needs a solution, and that problem is infections. Coronavirus has decimated economies and it's causing havoc across the world. Significantly, we believe that this will continue in the future. Hospital acquired infections are another massive problem that needs a solution. We at Pro Economy feel that these infections aren't necessarily getting any better. So this made us think about how long a specific bacteria or virus lasts on commonly used touch surfaces. And we found that coronavirus will last for three to seven days on stainless steel, three to seven days on plastic, four days on glass, and two days on wood. We really feel that there must be a solution to this problem. And that solution is antimicrobial copper touch surfaces. Dr. Sarah Wanders over at Southampton University says that human coronavirus was found to be permanently and rapidly deactivated upon contact with copper. In a fingertip contamination simulation, coronavirus 229E was killed within two to three minutes of contact with copper. The Environmental Protection Agency says that 99.9% .9 of infection-causing bacteria will be killed within two hours of contact with copper. And it's not just viruses that are killed by copper, it's also MRSA, pseudonymus, but also things like MERS, SARS, and even HIV. And that's not all. There are numerous other benefits to the use of copper. One of those benefits is the fact that it shows dirt. A surface that is dirty should not appear to be clean. A surface that is dirty should appear to be dirty. And that's something that copper actually offers. It also, there are also numerous cost savings associated with the installation of copper touch surfaces, especially if you reference in the reduction in hospital acquired infections. And finally, just as I mentioned in our video, bacteria find it difficult to become resistant to copper. All of our, client, all of our products are very compliant, so they're all compliant with Article 94 and Article 95 listed listing of the biocidal products regulations, but they're also compliant with various British standards, including fire safety and durability. In terms of durability, all of our product range comes with a 10-year mechanical guarantee, and the electroplating that we put on the stainless steel blade base, the copper electroplating, is tested to be durable. Finally, the stainless steel foundation that we use and we electroplate onto, that is grade four stainless steel. So if you want to get a handle upon infections, and if you want to get a handle upon bacteria and viruses, then please go to www proeconomy.com and our live, we've just made it live, our live uh, IBEX page is there where you can pre-order today. Um, now what I'd like to do is just do a quick question and answer session. It should last roughly uh, 10 minutes um, and I'll be joined by Sonia King and Diego. Thank you very much. Okay, so you've had some brilliant questions in so far. Uh, one, I'll start with, with the rank, Sonia, for you. 
And how much does the rate cost and how long will the bars last? Okay, well, I'll get to this actually. Um, so the rate system is three thousand pounds. Uh, it's available to buy online today. Uh, if you were to work that out over a two-year period, so the rate system is guaranteed to last for two years. Um, so that actually, I think it comes in at about four pound ten pence a day. Um, the bar should last for the two years. So it has been in kind of on trial sites for the last two years, um, and actually they've still got um, consumables left within the systems that are actually there. They will be consumed. So the more water somebody uses. Uses obviously the, the, the quicker the bar will go down, but yeah. generally two years is what we've kind of uh, yeah kind of practiced and guarantee the system. I would be, I guess it depends a lot on the water consumption. Uh, like it's not the same if you do ten litres per minute a day than four hundred. Uh, Brilliant. Okay. Uh, another rain question now. What power supply does the copper and silver unit need? Uh, okay, so that would be I think the maximum power supply. I think it's one point six amps. All right, one point six. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. One point six amps. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, Petra's question now: Can the portal be integrated with other systems like we Um, not, not, not at the moment, not directly. But um, that will take a bit of uh, work and development. But it's not something very difficult to do. That's um, actually something that we discussed with some of our clients. Um, what, the te what the Tetris portal does is, uh, and I believe all the things like CitySafe do as well, is just communicate CSV files. So with a bit of work and development, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's something we can, we can, if someone's really interested to do, it's not, not awfully difficult. Brilliant, okay. Oh, we've got an IBEX question already. Uh, will the copper tarnish over time? Uh, yeah, it will. Yeah, just like I said in my video, you know, um, one of the one of the uh, drawbacks that was you know initially kind of cited about copper is that it tarnishes over time. But we we see there's a real positive, and um, simply because uh, you know with that tarnish it shows that you're not cleaning it properly. So an estate manager or somebody in infection control, if they see a tarnished handle, they know that it's not being cleaned properly. And um, we can supply a citrus citric based disinfectant, which will completely get rid of get rid of your, your, your tarnish and not affect any of the. Uh, antimicrobial properties. It's been trial as well, isn't it? So yes, yeah, we've tried it. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, uh, another Tetris question now. Do the cases appear automatically once a failure occurs? Um, yeah, so I, as I said in the presentation, whenever there is, at uh, the moment there's anything, any red that you saw in there, any out of spec reading, that creates the case. So it's, it's not down to anyone to have to track down what's happened and, and, and Deal with a lot of scratches and everything. It's just an automatic creation of the case. So uh, actually, one thing I didn't show the presentation is um, there's a section just for general cases for your whole account. So any really positive reading that you have, you have you have a case appearance. So you have a full list of everything that you have to do that appears automatically. I think we've obviously tried to condense obviously the Tetris information down into kind of just a couple of yeah. minutes. But yeah, if someone did want to uh, like an online demo, we can certainly put one of those in. Yeah, so there's like a lot more. So it, um, that's the simplest thing. There's a lot more you can do with interrogation and, and obviously with the cases, you can see when they're open and when they're closed. So you can see how long it's taking, it's taking you to, to complete those cases and to do the actions that you need to do or how long is it taking you to get rid of the digital and things like that. Okay, okay. Uh, lots more questions still coming through. Um, what legislation is there for the right? Okay, so essentially it would be covered uh, by the Copper and Silver Finalisation Legislation. So obviously we've been working with uh, Zilling York System for 26 years. So as I mentioned, uh, we've got Article 95 compliance. Um, yeah, we're able to offer reassurance that it's fully compliant. We don't have really, really low levels as well. I think it's quite important to, to note that the copper is 0.2 milligrams per litre and uh, the silver is 0.02 milligrams per litre. So really, really low levels. Yeah, yeah. Kind of totally drink, the drinking water is like yeah. uh, for, for, for copper, which is 10 times higher, and the same 10, 10 times higher for, for the silver. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, another Tetris question now. Can I upload my own sample result? Uh, <laughs> well, this is actually something we get asked a lot when we present uh, um, Tetris to a lot of people. Um, uh, the, the quick answer is no. Uh, the reason for it is because we when we take a sample, we barcode each each bottle with uh, with our unique barcode that goes into the lab, and then the lab sends that that barcode back into the system. So it's all integrated in one place. And then doing the manual upload is a bit complicated. Also, we have the database of all the sample points that need to match the barcode. So it's, it's a bit of a tricky thing. So at the moment, that's not something that we can that we can do. Okay. 
Uh, Tetris again, how many people in my organization can have a login? Um, well, you can have uh, really as many as many people as you want. Um, uh, what you can do as well is if you have a, if you want to be stated in, for example, dealing with different sites, you can have all those sites under your own account and then you can filter who you can see those specific sites within your team. So, um, you have a full flexibility with licenses, who goes, who sees what, um, etc. Okay, perfect. Uh, another Ibex one, how much do they cost? That, that's the buying question. So the, 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 um, so, yeah, the push flag of four hundred and twenty-seven fifty. That's right. And the pair of leader handles is forty-nine fifty. Um, so you know, yeah, relatively you know, cost effective. I think we did some market research there, didn't we? And, um, yeah. yeah, kind of under the. Yeah, we did, we did a whole bunch of market market research, and yeah, that was that was the the price point that most people came at. Okay, another raise question. Can the raise system be used in an app? Yep, it's a short answer. <laughs> yes. Anywhere that's got a flow of 0 to 22 litres per minute. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah. uh, another IBEX question. Yes, <laughs> come on. Yeah. What is stopping someone from copying this concept? Wow, is that all from, from one of our competitors? <laughs> uh, yeah, really good question. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you yeah, know, so. In terms of Article 95 and Article 94 listing on the buyer side of Products Directive, um, we are you know, part of a very select group of companies that can sell antimicrobial copper and can advertise antimicrobial copper. Um, so it's very, very difficult for it to be copied unless people want to go against legislation. Okay, a uh, couple more Ray questions. Uh, Sonny, maybe for you. How do you know if the Ray is working and are there any cost concerns having it in a home? Okay, uh, well, essentially, um, we dose at really, really low levels, so just we need to make that sure, uh, clear to people, I think, that it is um, clear. So, what was the first part of the question? Um, how do you know if the rain is working? Okay, so it has a power supply that's got a light on it, so you'll know if it's actually working. And then we also were able to take a metal sample, so people will be provided with a 250 milliliter or two of those every month, so you take one from the nearest outlet from the rain and the third outlet from the rain. They'll go to a lab for the analysis yeah. just to make sure. And then those will be uploaded onto our Tetris system, so if you buy a ray, you'll get a login for our Tetris system, and you'll be able to see your methods results over time. So that comes in with the yeah. users. Obviously, for the second part of the question, um, the, the, I think the system only activates when there's flow through it, so there's no risk of build up or things like that. So yeah. if it doesn't when there's flow, there's no flow, it doesn't go. So you don't you don't end up having build up of metals in your in your, in your system. Perfect. Okay, okay. So a couple more questions then to end on. Uh, one more for Tetris. I will go for this one. How many samples can the system archive? Um, that's a very good question. So we have up until um, three months worth of worth of data. So I cannot, I don't really know the exact number of, of samples, but um, um, it certainly depends on how many files go up. It has to do with the capacity, the storage capacity. But it's about three years worth of three years worth of sampling. You get some good trends then as well. Yeah. You, yeah exactly. Good. And obviously that that doesn't mean after those three years that the data is lost, and that can be then exported and saved in a separate in a separate place. Perfect. Okay. And then I'll just finish on a couple of our next ones, sorry, I'm sort of conscious of time. And um, yeah. do we still need to clean them? Yes, absolutely, 100%. We still need to clean them. Uh, we'd be a really bad infection control company if we didn't advise people to clean their handles. So actually, you need to you know, follow routine um, hygiene practices uh, for, for all of your handles, absolutely. And then the final one we'll end on. Does the tarnish affect the copper's antimicrobial abilities? Good question. And I'm really, these questions are amazing. Um, so, uh, no is a really, really short answer. So, there's been some studies done, and uh, the tarnishing doesn't actually affect. So, if you're, if you're not cleaning it and you're just having a tarnished copper touch surface, it won't affect the antimicrobial ability. Um, so, so, yeah, is that, is that it? That's it. That's all the questions we've got time um, for today. Okay, so I just wanted to uh, just quickly say a big, big thank you to a couple of people who have helped us put this webinar together. To the man behind the camera, you can't see him, but I can. Uh, he's smiling very broadly. Um, that is uh, Daniel Wong, so thank you so much, Daniel. Uh, thank you, uh, Caleb, who's one of our uh, interns here. Um, he's been moving lights around, uh, which has been really fun. Um, and thank you, obviously, to Diego and to Sonia. You guys are amazing. Uh, Catherine Murphy, who's our COO, who's kind of the brain behind the operation. 
So uh, thank you for all of the stuff that you're doing. Um, and then in our control room, we set up our, in our boardroom, we set up what we call the control room, it's very space S. Um, and uh, I yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a guy in there called James, so I just wanted to send a massive thank you to him. I know he's listening to now because he's in the control center. So thank you very much, James. And thank you to everybody who's tuned in. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, just send us. Any, any questions you've got? Just email me at sales.proacademy.com or just give us a call at 055 or go to the website. Yeah. Great, thank you ever so much. Thank, thank you. you.